Hey, well, good afternoon, YouTube. This is Dave coming to you from the paddock here in Southern Maryland. I have the big door open. In fact, here, look. It's 60 degrees and sunny, no wind. Um, I haven't had that door open since I started making videos, so it's kind of nice. I'm sitting here in a t-shirt, um, and it's fantastic. <clears throat> Guys, I got a request from somebody to talk about kind of the continuing restrictions or how hard it's becoming to purchase tobacco. So I thought I would address that and um, that'll be our single topic really for this for this video. All right, guys, I'm going to... Oh, you know what? I should do some housekeeping. So obviously this is my Dracula pipe. Um, it's Peterson. I forget which model. 87, I believe. And what am I smoking in it today? I'm back pounding on my Ahab's comfort here. So um, it's my second bowl. Look, I'm using this beautiful tobacco tray to rub it out. And um, I got to tell you, I'm enjoying this bowl. It's, uh, this is my second bowl. I'm, I'm liking it. I just think it's one of those acquired tastes, that Latakia, the Lap Bomb. It's just uh, that floralness. I don't think it's bad. I just think it takes a while for my mouth to get used to it. And the other thing I'll say is, I, I this is the Maryland Meerschaum. This, I began smoking, and I started smoking all my aromatics in there. And I'm wondering if my mind, my brain, my emotion was when I smoke here, I, I get something sweet and nice. <clears throat> and when I smoke this, I don't have any attachment to it. I think one of the things the death of the Maryland Marisham has taught me is I've rolled through nine or ten pipes the last, I rolled through a different pipe every day. So I have no attachment to what's in the pipe or what comes out of the pipe. I think that may play a role in what your mouth does with different brand, blends. And I see a lot of you guys say, this pipe only smokes Ahab Comfort. And that may be the way to go. I didn't want to do that. And I'm not saying I'm going to, but I understand that thought process now. All right, guys, I'm going to express an opinion here on tobacco restrictions. It is my opinion that it will never be cheaper, cheaper or easier to purchase pipe tobacco than it is today. I just make that blanket statement. I don't think there will ever be an easing of restrictions, a lowering of taxes. A lowering of import assessments. Um, I don't think any of this is going to get easier or cheaper, period, for t pipe tobacco. I should just end the video there. Guys, one of the reasons I believe that tobacco uh, products, pipe tobacco, and cigars in general are being targeted is it's part of that um, attack on the warrior class of males. I know it can seem awful conspiracy-ish, but we don't see the same level on cigarettes that we see on um, pipe tobaccos. I think we'll see the continuing restrictions on shipping, especially across interstate lines and certainly intercompany, intercountry boundaries. Um, so I'm going to set the pipe down. Guys, I just went and pulled this, okay? I just pulled this off the internet. This is, this is UPS's official position. Shipments containing tobacco products are accepted for transportation only from shippers who are licensed and authorized to ship tobacco products. I don't even know how you get licensed or authorized. And I'll tell you that this is their official policy worldwide, but many UPS stores just simply will not take a box or a package if you disclose it has tobacco in it right now. It doesn't matter if you're licensed or not. If you bring them a product, a box, a package, and you tell them 
when they ask you what's in it <clears throat> and you say tobacco, they hand it back to you and go, I can't, I, we can't ship that. It's already happening. All right. I know my, my local UPS store will not take it. They've already made that decision. They don't even ask you if you're licensed or authorized. They don't even care. They just won't do it. So I went and pulled this a minute ago, right off the internet. This is the official FedEx policy. We prohibit the shipping of tobacco and tobacco products, even if you have proper licenses and are authorized to ship tobacco products. We will be unable to accept your shipment. Tobacco and all tobacco products cannot be accepted at any UPS, uh, any FedEx or FedEx office location. And they actually list all the products, so it's not just ours. It's uh, cigarettes, e-cigarettes, vapes, cigars. USPS, the United States Postal Service, still accepts them for now. But guys, I mean, if uh, if these guys continue to clamp down and then USPS changes its policy, game over, right? I know the guy who asked me to do this is out of Maine. He's pissed off because Maine already is one of those states that says you can't ship to Maine, period. You just cannot ship tobacco to the state of Maine. So I live in Maryland, and for years, it's only been the last few years that you can have alcohol or wine shipped from an online source to the state of maryland and that took us a long time it took us probably a decade of fighting to get that authorized i think it's going to get worse i think eventually no fedex or ups office will take anything and i think eventually the usps will outlaw it as well because i know when i try to ship it and I put like what's on the box. If I write tobacco, my guy, my local guy's cool. He'll he hands me the form back and says, write something else on the form for me. That's pretty crazy. Um, and if I'm trying to ship overseas with USPS, they just he said, please don't even tell me if it's tobacco. So I don't know. Um, so let's talk about taxation. So in the United States, we call it sin tax, S-I-N, sin tax. It's the easiest tax on the planet to impose and to raise. And most of those, um, the two are the alcohol and tobacco. So you're going to continue to see tobacco tax get raised because the average individual doesn't care. They don't even notice. Um, if you want something interesting, look up how much of that carton of cigarettes goes to tax. Um, look at the tax line when you purchase tobacco. It's already pretty high. And almost every year they increase it. Part of the reason I built this crazy cellar back here in a little one that's not quite this good, that's not this good at all, in Wyoming, and part of the reason you're seeing me start to collect cigars and I'm going to do a big collection out in Wyoming is I believe it's going to get harder and harder and eventually it might become impossible. You know, it might be the only way you can go is go to a local brick and mortar shop. And I, I don't really, I've got one close to me um, and their selection is okay. It's not great. Um, but I, I do believe we're kind of headed down that road. And, and I mean, as angry as we get about it, it doesn't matter. Our opinions don't particularly matter about it. I think if you write your state legislature, they're going to throw that letter away. They just, they just don't care. Um, I think it's far easier to raise tobacco tax than it is alcohol tax, because if alcohol taxes start to suppress sales, the um, the people who make the rules, the puppeteers, the elite, they, they make money on alcohol, and um, I don't think too many of them make money on tobacco. They they realized that was something to move away from a few years ago. Um, we went through a huge one here in Maryland, um, the tobacco restitution tax, and the tobacco restitution program. We actually paid, we raised, we, we raised taxes and paid those taxes to tobacco farmers to pay them to stop growing tobacco and, buy, and, and really grow anything else. So the, the Maryland tobacco industry is ruined. The, the auction barns are gone, <clears throat> and, and those who grow, grow on, what, on a contract basis only. 
but we probably grow 10% of the tobacco in Southern Maryland we did 30 years ago. And it's declined now. It's declined to the point where people grow up because they, they're they older and they want to maintain a history of it. Or their grandfather were, were a tobacco farmer. Um, even the farm, my horse farm was a tobacco farm for 200 years. And by the time I bought it, we it was a soybean farm. And they just moved away from it. It's just not profitable anymore. There's no buyers. Um, Southern Maryland tobacco was considered a premium leaf and brought the highest dollars at auction. But even with that, you couldn't buy, any, you couldn't find any buyers. The introduction of vaping products has also allowed many legislative bodies to now divide. It used to be alcohol and tobacco. Now tobacco has been divided up. You now vaping products, pipe tobacco, cigars, and cigarettes. <clears throat> and I think part of the reason that was done is so that they could maybe leave cigarettes alone. And maybe not raise tax on them because a lot of people smoke cigarettes, but go ahead and continue to raise um, taxes and fees and import the uh, fees on maybe even just pipe tobacco. I think we'll see more things head that way. Cigar uh, cigarettes feed the big pharma machine, right? I mean, if you look at cancer rates and the causation in tobacco, it is largely cigarette uses that causes the cancers that feed the big pharma. So they don't want to mess with that. Same argument for alcohol. Alcohol feeds the big pharma machine, right? Alcohol, alcohol alcoholism actually takes you out of society. If you're an alcoholic, you're largely pulled out of society. You're, you're not a, you're not a threat, you know? You're needy. You need you need from the state. You need from the local. You need right. You're not out protesting, you know. So I think alcohol use is actually going to be a continued supported thing. And also, alcoholism feeds a big part of the pharma industry. So I think you're going to see maybe even more targeted taxation and and suppression of tobacco uh, pipe tobacco more so than the other categories. Um, when you look at the UPS regulations, it's now they are now called out like that. FedEx now calls them out like that. The USPS policy calls them out by lines now, not just one category. So I think that may be in preparation to make pipe tobacco even harder than cigarettes to purchase, pay for, and ship. So it's just something to be aware of. We can freak out about it, but what good is that going to do? We can get angry about it. What the good is that going to do? I just think somebody's being forewarned is being forearmed. I mean, we can take action. We, we can build slowly. You don't have to freak out and do it today or next week or over the next month, but over the next couple of years, you know, if there are um, things that you want to sell or start selling and maybe sell her deep instead of wide, right? I have a little bit of regret of how wide my seller is. I don't know if it's a regret, but what Johnny Onions is doing, you know, he said, look, these are like the, I think he said there's five or six blends that he's going to sell her ultra deep and really shave his seller width down. I, I think that's uh, smart. If, you know, if, if you like six, five, six blends, you know, go after them now before it becomes hard to do it. Because maybe the one you favor is one of the ones that's going to become very hard to find. I think becoming a, I think tobacco growth is something that's very hard to achieve in the United States today and is unsupported by um, the system, right? The purchasing system. If you were to sell, if you were to decide to be a tobacco farmer, especially a pipe tobacco farmer, who's going to buy your product? And how are you going to get it to them? I think you're going to hear more and more about this on the down low over the next several years. We might be in five or ten years dreaming of what we have today. And so what do you do about it? You take personal action, right? And this goes back to this mantra that you might be sick of hearing from me. And that is there are two levels to be worried about. For security is how I normally preach it. But this is a good example. You can be worried about state law and national law and importation fees and taxation and the 
destruction of the tobacco pipe tobacco growing industry the system and the infrastructure or you can carve out a little bit of money out of your budget and 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 sell her you know maybe stop buying pipes and buy get your cellar built right stop buying all the accoutrements that go around pipe smoking be happy with what you have and sell her deep and we can make those kind of choices now we can make those kind of changes um anyway i recommend taking action at an individual level rather than sweat worry and get pissed off about the big macro picture i just don't have the i don't have the arm strength to twist that that size of the arm guys i'm gonna wrap it up i don't know if there's i mean we could talk on and on about this we could go state by state and talk about the restrictions and which ones don't allow and which ones do we can talk about the ones that have pending legislation we could read deeper into the fedex ups and usps laws um even dhl their formal policy is no tobacco products and they don't seem to be implementing that because i know i've personally used dhl to get products to some of you guys so um you know if i use ester balls i use dhl to get it out um and they so far they haven't had any issues with it but they probably will at some point so guys um we could continue to talk about de the demasculation you know and that part of the reason i picked up cigars and part of the reason i picked up pipe smoking is it's very masculine it's a great thing to do it kind of gives a big f you and a finger to the world that's trying to make us all into women um but i don't know if that's very productive on this video i just wanted to you know i had a guy ask me to do a video get this kind of get this topic out there and see what you guys are seeing and feeling and, and talk about what you've experienced talk back do a video do a vr comment here on this video about what you're experiencing what you're seeing but um i don't believe it's ever been harder to do this and i don't think it'll ever be easier than it is today so you know, that's a weird sentence, right? I don't think it's ever been harder to accomplish what we're doing than it is today, but I don't think it'll ever be easier than it is today. I don't know if you can come up with, I couldn't find a single example on my research today of anybody lowering the taxes, lowering the import fees, making it less restrictive, making it more available, making it easier to ship. I couldn't find one example. Everything is headed towards more restriction. And by the way, guys, I think that's true of a lot of these things. You know, we we talk, we're a pipe community, so we talk about that. But I think it's true for guns, any sort of weaponry. I think it's true for any sort of ammo. Um, and I think cigars are falling into that bucket as well. So anything that's sort of on that masculinity or this toxic masculinity kick that the world is on, the Western world, not just the U.S., is on, I think is headed this way. So... um Pipe tobacco is just the one that you know I got asked to talk about today, so that's why it's the main subject. Guys, poke back. You know, tell me where uh, where you're finding it easier or cheaper to do this uh, this hobby. That's it, guys. Um, let's see. It's Monday. Hope you had a great Monday. Hope you got a good week ahead of you. We'll talk to you later.